Hello and welcome to our weekly online service as the six. I've come outside today because it's such a beautiful day. The sun's shining and it still feels very mild. Now at the moment we're currently hosting a venerable Bethuel who's come from Kenya to spend a bit of time with us and as we've been talking he's been sharing with us something about how some of his congregations they meet under a tree or around a tree and therefore somehow it's very apt to be outside at the moment to be in that space kind of connecting with what is happening in amongst his communities in his part of the world and of course as we come outside we we see the glory of uh, the created uh, world in which we live, the beauty of it. And of course, also at the moment, we're, we're in that in-between time, aren't we, where the leaves are gradually starting to fall as we move into autumn, deeper autumn maybe, and winter as well. But nevertheless, throughout all of these times, difficult times, and we know that at the moment the times around us are still quite turbulent, there is that sense as the light shines through each and every day we're reminded about the gracious presence and love of God not just here but all around the world and so as we come to our worship service this morning a simple service let us just pause for a moment to open our hearts and to be open to the presence of the Lord amongst us I want to read these words that come from Psalm 150, the whole emphasis being upon praise. Praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty heavens, praise him for his mighty acts of power, praise him for his surpassing greatness, praise him with the sounding of the trumpet, praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But before we gather and to start to sing, let's just pause for a few moments also. Maybe become aware of those things in our lives where we know we're not quite as God would want us to be. And we know that we, we're not quite as the Lord would want us to be either. And we know that for ourselves too. Let's just pause for a few moments, aware of those things. Let's not hold on to them though. Let's be willing to let go of them and to trust in the Lord's forgiveness for our lives. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. And so let us pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from your sins, confirm you and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as God's forgiven people, let us now lift our voices in praise and worship. Thank you. 
So we come to that part of our service where we have our reading. And today I'm going to be reading from the book of Luke, chapter 4, from verse 16. Maybe a very familiar passage to many of us. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and we were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Do hear in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. I tell you the truth, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so let us pray as we just come to reflect for a few moments on this passage. And it may well be that there's a particular phrase or a word that you've heard that struck you. And as I said often before, please hold on to that. Chew on it. I will be reflecting in many ways on what strikes me from what I've heard as well, very much in the moment today. So let us pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your written word that continues to speak to us down the ages. Help us today to listen, to hear, 
for what you are saying to us right now. And may we act upon it. May we put it into practice in our lives each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Today we're marking Bible Sunday and this very familiar passage from Luke is one of those set readings. And as I think about this passage, at the heart of it is this action by Jesus to go to a place where he's very familiar, where he's known, he, to pick up the scroll, if you like, the equivalent of the Bible, the written Bible for them then, that we think of in terms of a book today, and he went to a particular place. Now, it's not necessarily clear to me whether that was the set reading for the day, but he knew that that was a particularly important uh, passage for him personally. And I, I imagine that over the years that that passage had been read numerous times, maybe part of an annual cycle uh, of readings, who knows? And so they may well have been very familiar words that the hearers in that synagogue, synagogue rather, would have been familiar with. They would have heard them before. But somehow, at that point, nothing had really sunk in fully about the significance of what they, uh, what they meant. It hadn't as yet really made any difference to who and how they were, until Jesus comes amongst them and not only reads the words, but actually says he's come to fulfil them. Fulfil them in a way which is not just about talking and believing in what they mean, but to put them into practice. Because at the heart of those words, it's not just fine ideas, at the heart of them is about action, to preach good news to the poor, to be sent to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now, they weren't necessarily fully ready to hear what he was saying, certainly if you read on, in terms of their reactions, they were not necessarily made to feel very comfortable what, what, by what they had heard. But what comes across to me, maybe at the moment as I reflect on those read, this particular reading, is that these are not just fine words to be heard, listened, uh, put back on the shelf, but they're words that were intended to have an impact. They were intended to encourage people to do something about some, the, what was really important in, in God's heart for people. And we very much get that sense of God's agenda for people through those words. They were words, as I say, that would have been there for hundreds of years before Jesus spoke them out on that particular day but he in speaking them out he was saying to them I'm actually going to put this into practice they're no longer just words that are on the shelf they are words that are going to become reality they're going to impact people's lives they're going to make a difference they're going to change the world change the world in his times and of course, that's what he went about to do. He didn't just uh, sit and uh, think these are fine ideas. He rolled up his sleeves, as we know, and put those into practice by going out and proclaiming the good news, by healing people, by going to engage with people who were marginalised and on the edge, to change their lives, to realise that those who were felt that they were on the outside. No, they were no longer on the outside. They were to be embraced within the scope of God's gracious and incredible, almost scandalous love 
that truly embraces all and then calls us and challenges us to turn away from our way of looking and living and being and doing, laying aside things that uh, maybe hold us back from being fully who we are to follow his way and in so doing to find life, to find life in a very different way from uh, what people in those days would have expected. And the same is true today, a path of service, of giving, of blessing first before receiving. And as I reflect on those words for myself and that thought about words that are intended to encourage action, I realise how they shape my responses even to things recently that some of you will be aware of. It shaped my response and, and willingness to be open to receive uh, Bethuel from Kenya, to be willing to offer that hospitality, to open our homes, to enable him to see and experience something, what it means to be church in our lives, in our settings here. And of course, that willingness to respond with a yes, really, to the needs of this family who we hope and pray will be coming soon amongst our midst as part of enabling them to uh, rebuild their lives after something really terrible and traumatic. It, it reminds me again, personally, of that call to be focused upon blessing others first, serving them first, expressing God's love Yep, sometimes just by being there, but certainly by doing something in his name and then being ready to speak when asked and to unpack and sometimes uh, discuss with people what faith actually means for our lives. This book that we call the Bible is intended for us to hear what God is saying to us, but so that we then become a part of his mission, that today we become the means of enabling others to uh, receive and be a part of Jesus' response to all of us really, but especially those who are feeling outside of the scope of God's love and grace. So I'm just going to close by repeating that particular agenda which in many ways feels like a, a motivation and a driver for what what's, it feels important for us as the church in our localities to be all about, in a way that people around us who may have no faith at all, may be very sceptical about what, we, what they might call religion, that might cause them to, to notice and think, hmm, what is, it, what is it about those people, the church? Christians? What makes them different in such a way that they might themselves might wish to come and be a part of what God is doing in our midst? The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Amen. And now as we come to our time of prayer, let's be still again for a few moments. Heavenly Father, we thank you that as we come to you with those things that are on our hearts, conscious of those things too that are on your heart, we can do so knowing that we are in you. That as we pray in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, you hear us, you listen, you act. And so often that action is about changing our response and our hearts. 
Lord, we give thanks for the beauty of this world. We give thanks for the beauty of this day, the sunshine, the colours, the sound of the wind, the sounds of life all about us. Lord, we give you thanks and praise. And yet, Lord, we know that this world is not as you would want it to be. And so we pray for those parts of the world where there is pain, where there is conflict, where there is division, where there is discrimination, where there is hate. And Lord, we pray, let your kingdom come so that your love, your grace, your peace would prevail and would prevail over all of these things. And Lord, we pray this knowing that there is power in your name as we pray for these things. We pray for those uh, in this country who are struggling at the moment with worries and anxieties about how they're going to pay bills, how they're going to manage through this winter. And we pray for the responses of so many to help from the state, we give thanks for that response, but also from communities, local authorities and church communities too, and help us to be a part of those who are there to help and support and encourage those who find themselves in difficult times. Lord, we pray for our country at this time with so much turbulence at the political level. We pray for wisdom amongst those who will select and appoint a new Prime Minister in the coming days. May they truly seek to listen and to serve the common good of all, rather than the particular ideological point of view of a few. We continue to pray for King Charles as he settles into his role and responsibilities. And we give thanks for the seriousness with which he takes that responsibility that is now laid upon him. We give thanks for the connections that we are developing here uh, between ourselves in this benefice uh, with Capsabet in Kenya. And Lord, we also pray, give thanks for those who have been so kind and generous in preparing for this Ukrainian family. And we pray for all those practical arrangements that will enable them to come and rebuild their lives amongst us. Let's take a moment or two to bring before the Lord those people who are on our hearts, who need our prayers, who need the presence and love of God, the healing hand of the Lord in their lives. Lord, we thank you for the power of your Spirit and as we pray in your name, you are at work in these people's lives. Bring healing, hope, new life and peace. And we gather all of these prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
So we bring our service to a close with the words of this very simple blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you all or those you know, love, care for, pray for, this day and evermore. Amen. And so let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a good week, everybody. And in the midst of these still challenging times for so many varied reasons, no matter how you might be feeling, 
Look to the Lord our God. Trust in him. And hear those words for each one of us in all circumstances. Peace be with you. My peace I give to you. Bye for now. See you again soon.